Hello everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. I've just noticed my camera's just moved so I'm just going to try and fix that. Just, there we go, it, it likes to move by itself. So how is everyone? Um, tonight it's feeling very autumn-y. Um, I had some washing out earlier and it's still a bit damp so things aren't drying all the way. So um, I want to uh, look at all your comments as we go along so I'm just going to load those up on my phone so I've got to remember to turn the sound right down because that's caught me out a few times so let me know in the comments how you are and um, is it feeling autumn where you are or is it super hot is it super cold I would absolutely love to know where you're from and um, I'm in the south of England and um, hi Amy oh wow you, actually, you can join us today Yes, we're going to be making this um, telephone box here. So I have the die sets for you. Um, it's actually back in stock. This um, die set, the main die set, it's a two-part die set. Um, it sold out, um, I can't think now, last autumn, uh, pro probably around about November, October, November time. So, hi Gillian. Um, so, yeah, it's literally taken that long to come back into stock. So, um, so I'm guessing everyone can hear me because people aren't saying I can't hear you. If I'm too loud, let me know. Um, okay, so here is the die set here. This is the square paper lantern die set. So if, sorry if that's a bit bright there. I do have quite bright lights. Hi, Samantha. Super hot in Florida. Yes, I can imagine it probably quite humid as well. Okay, so this is the square paper bag. This was the set that sold out, and the set that goes with it is the telephone box editions die set. Now, this set here is what is going to cut the windows that you see here, and it's going to do this domed lid. It's a shaped lid, as you can see. That it's super cool. This took me a while to um, get these bits right, but once I had it, I was like, yes, got it down. Okay, so this is the telephone box editions die set. So I am going to go through a few sets because we do have lots of other sets that actually go with this as as a base. You can have this as a gift bag, a gift bag. You can have it in a gift box. We have Christmas die die panels for the sides. You can turn this into a mini album. I'll, I'll show you all the samples in a moment. Um, let's move that aside. Okay, so here is another box that you can make with this these two die sets. I'll leave these here so you can see which ones I'm actually um, using to make each box. So this is the telephone box but without any windows and that's using the ultimate gift bow. So it just comes off like that. That's also using my London Christmas in London papers as well. So I've got links for everything down below and you can make a really cool gift box without turning it into a telephone box. So let's have another look at another panel that you can get. Now this was part of the Christmas release, I think two Christmases ago. This is the Lantern and Square Bag Die Set Editions. Now these two sets together are going to make this box here. And we have the lid there and the snowflake on the top. And again, I've put some vellum in there so you can pop some, some um, like Christmas lights in there micro lights that looks really nice and I don't have physical examples but we also have some trellis dies as well so this is the geometric and arch panel die set and the leaf and scroll panel die set so I do want to move on now because I want to start creating so instead of you getting the snowflake panel here you will have a choice here of these four panels and you get the mats that go be behind them as well so again you can use them for any occasion but today I'm going to be using these two here the square paper bag and the telephone box additions okay so I've done some die cutting already so I just need to um, clear the decks here slightly because these boxes they do take up a lot of room Hi Caroline and hi Sandra. I've got to keep an eye on the um, on the comments too. Oh dear, I'm running out of space because I need space to actually do some die cutting as well. So um, someone also in the Facebook group asked me if um, I could do a tutorial for the star, which I haven't done yet. So I'm happy that, uh, to do that as well today. So 
Okay, Hilda's asking me what die cutting machine I use. I currently use the Couture Creations Go Power and Emboss. That's currently out of stock at Craft Stash, but you may be able to find it at other places like Hobby Craft, um, places like that. So here it is. I'm just going to bring it in here. There we go. The Go Power and Emboss. I do love this one. These are my plates, and they're relatively flat, and they stay flat as well. I turn them regularly, so I'll be using this today. That gets turned off just like that. I also use the A4 Gemini. I do love that one too. And I also have on my desk next to me the Big Shot, um, just the standard size Big Shot, the, the white one with the grey handle. So I love that one too. So let's grab out the die. That, um, I have gone ahead. And I've already die cut, so I'm taking the die out of this die set. Well, that's bright, isn't it? So, this is the lantern. I'm just grabbing the die to show you. It's got stuck, it won't come out of the envelope now. Oh, it's got caught. It is a very big die, so you are going to be needing an A4 machine for this one. There we go, it's finally come out, and I'm dropping stuff. I don't want to use any of my dies if you heard that bounce. Okay, so this is the main die. It's going to do all of the score lines for you, and it's going to get the tab on there and everything there. It's going to cut it and score it for you, so all you have to do is do your folding. So I've die cut two of those, and the cardstock I'm using is the Foundations range from Creative Expressions. I have linked that down below, and it's in the shade Ruby. Now, on the... Um, the thumbnail that Craft Stash have on that. It looks quite pink, but it's a beautiful um, like Christmas red. It's really nice deep. It's not wine coloured, it's just a lovely, beautiful, deep red. Okay, so I've die cut two of those. So next I need to repeat this using the telephone box die. So here it is. Okay, so I'm going to be needing these two here and I'll just take out some of my extra bits in there. Okay, so this looks a bit like a chocolate bar, so you can make a chocolate bar if you want to. Make a chocolate bar card. This is what's going to make the lid. Again, it's quite big, so you're going to need a big machine for that. And we have an embossing die here. This says telephone, that's what's going to make that. And you just get a black pen, a very like skinny thin black pen, and cover that in. This is going to emboss, and you would die cut this out onto white cardstock. Just run them through together, and you will have something that looks like that. And just use a black pen, nice fine nib, and colour that in. As you can see there it's embossed so you can really go in and do the outlines for that so this is a really easy set to do and this rectangle here is if you want to push your windows up a little higher you can have this I use the same die actually I switched them over but you can add them and change, uh, switch them around so they're both going to work either way and I've also got some acetate here that I'll be gluing on as well. So this is Paper Mania. It's nice and thick. It's a tw it comes in 12 by 12 sheets. It's my favourite acetate. It's difficult to die cut with it, so it's literally just for your windows. Um, so let's get these down. And if you're unsure on where to put your windows, I mean, I've already done one already, so I want it all even. But if you are unsure how much space you would like to leave <clears throat> you can always grab the die and this is going to be the bottom of the, the lid of the lid that goes around the box so you can just use that as a gauge I just need to get a drink of water okay so we're going to pop that on grab some tape I've just covered the die machine so I can't see the comments but I can look on my other screen that's way over here to keep an eye on everyone 
Alex and hi Sarah. Hope everyone is doing well. I just want to make sure that I keep on the comments because I do like to answer your questions in real time. It's a lot easier for me to do it that way. So I'm going to do one on this side and then I'm going to move it over and do another one on the other side. So yeah, August is, is always really quiet during August and then September hits and then it just starts getting busy again so everyone's just enjoying their summer so I am looking forward to September we're, we're going to be obviously back to school for the kids and um, starting my Halloween and things as well so I also have a new collection out as well it's going to be autumn themed so I'm looking forward to showing you all the samples for that I hope you could hear what I was saying over the, the wearing of the machine ok so let's pop this out and then you can just pop all of these squares like you can keep these squares if you want to and then we'll just repeat it again on the other side and I'm just making sure that I have it, everything lined up I am sitting down for this so I'm normally a stander I have been quite active today, getting um, the hallway ready actually for going back to school. It's a complete mess all summer. So I was just meeting everything up, hoovering behind the, um, the uh, shoe racks and picking up all the dust from there. Just getting the hallway ready for going back to school. It's so much easier doing the school bits and vlogs with it. Leaving in the morning clean hallway. Okay, so next up I'm going to, whilst I've got the die cutting machine, I was going to do something else, I was going to put the acetate in, but whilst I have the machine out, I'm going to quickly show you the rest of what we have to do. So I need some more card, I need one more. And we're going to do the lid with this one. So here is the lid. Let's run that through. It's always good to just do all your die, die cutting, choose all your card stock and your patterns beforehand, and then the dies will do the rest for you. And then you can just have fun assembling and then decorating. That's the great thing about using the dies. It just it takes out a lot of the work. Okay, so whilst I'm die cutting these out, please let me know in the comments, even if you're watching on the replay, let me know what sort of Halloween projects um, you would like to see, um, because I'm just get, getting my ideas and things. There will be a few simply made craft um, ideas, sorry, uh, projects as well. So um, there's quite a few sets that I want to Halloweenize, if that's even a word. Okay, so this is going to be for the telephone. So I'm popping down the rectangle first, popping that in the center again. You can use it on the long one as well. It's up to you. Use a bit of tape as well just to keep that in place. And then we'll run that through. It's a bit overkill for that tiny little die. Using a big A4 machine, but whilst I have it out then I don't have to run one of my other die cutting machine. word telephone I'm hoping that's visible and for this one I've already coloured it in black okay I'm gonna have a quick tidy up now because I don't want to lose any of these dies so we can pop them all back together now back in the set I can't believe 
believe how long that die set was out of stock. I think it was something to do with this, um, the, the, the Suey Canal, so I, don't, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but the, you know, that, that big ship that got, got stuck. Because after um, that port that came to port in the UK, that was when things started to come back into stock in lots of areas at Craft Stash. So I'm thinking maybe there was a hold up there somewhere. Okay, now we can start assembling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold down all of these lines. Again, that's all being done. Use a bone folder. That's going to give you some really good crisp lines. Now this one is a bit fiddly because we have these gaps here. you may notice here that I added the windows on top of where the gusset would be here. I'll show you on this one here. We have these diagonal lines here, but I haven't touched them. I haven't folded them or anything. I've gone straight over with the, um, the window die and I've literally just done that and that should hold and be okay. And now I'm just going to quickly add these on here. So what I'm going to do, I I shouldn't really use glue, but just for speed today I will. But use some like, thin red tape for this because acetate can be quite static and it can cause your um, glue to kind of jump <laughs> across the acetate and it's really hard to kind of get that off once it's done that. So I'm just going to tiny bit something just here as well. And then once I put my bit of acetate on, I'm just going to try and get it first at the right time so I don't have to move it about because sometimes if you move acetate about as well it glue kind of just spreads out underneath it and it can go into a visible part so I just want to avoid that so I just be super careful so same tip there if you're making shaker windows like shaker window cards and things so that is our first one on do the second one This is super relaxing actually. So I tend to have a, like a little London display all year round on one of my shelves. So this would, wouldn't look out of place all year. However, I do like to jazz it up for Christmas and have lights and add some like Christmas themes, like London themes to it. So my display just gets festive at Christmas and then the festive bits come down again afterwards so I always have the London uh, theme up so again this is going to be working for you know any time of year but perfect if you love like the London stuff at Christmas so I'm working on these two pieces as separate pieces so far I'm not going to be gluing them together just yet because I want to work on the windows and if you don't want to use acetate you can use vellum and then you won't be able to see through if you don't want to kind of if you just want to keep it a bit opaque and I've linked these little bottles as well with the, the pin as well this is cosmic shimmer in here and it's a lot easier to use it from this tiny bottle and it doesn't clog up either, which is great. I've not had any trouble at all with these bottles. They're a set of three. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, even if you're watching on the replay. Oh no, I forgot to put the dots there. This is what happens if you forget to put the dots in. Your acetate goes in slightly at the centre. And I squidge some glue on it. So I'm just 
just use your nail there just to try and get that off. There we go. Okay, so now we have done that. We can join these together now. So just like putting together a box, pop them together just like that. And I'm going to be using some Velcro um, on the bottom as well so I can actually store this flat. The lid won't store flat, but it's an awful lot easier to store if you were to use this as a Christmas decoration or even as a gift box. You can just collapse it down. Okay, so that's all there. Whoops, sorry guys. Let's Good job I wasn't using the microphone with the camera then because you'd have got a boing. So I'm just I've just folded over this one section there with the flap. And you can do this trick with any box. And then you bring it down in the centre and that will save you trying to carefully match everything up. Get a bit fiddly that way. Okay, I just need to keep the pin in here. Okay, everything's falling down now. Yeah. Okay, right. So this, well, these are the Velcro Super Slim stick-ons. So I'm going to just grab myself. These are from Amazon. I'm I forgot to link these ones, so I'll add these afterwards. But um, just search that up in Amazon. That did move. Did that move the camera? Like no, that's moved. There we go. Okay, so these are super slim. They're not bulky. Well, they, they do have a little bit of a bulk. They're about a millimetre thin. And they really are very subtle. I have these already popped on just like that. So I can fold this down when I'm not using it. It's absolutely perfect when I have to go to um, like a TV show, create a craft, or travelling up to the Craft Dash Studios. I can just make it tiny and then travel with it so these are oval shaped i'm just going to cut that in half okay so i'm going to add them to the bottom just there And then you can give them a good press as well. That really helps. Okay, pop it over. Okay, off these come. This one is slightly harder because it's supposed to come off as one piece. You're not really supposed to chop them up, but hey, I don't always follow the rules. put that on the wrong side. Silly me. Will this come off? Yes it will. So I haven't properly pressed them down yet. So strip right now we can pop that down okay so we can take that apart now it has lost a bit of its sticky because I took it off but I am going to press these down individually now who would have thought velcro was so fiddly this is the first time I've done that actually so these are using very strong okay give those a press about 24 hours to kind of really yeah 20 they're good after 10 minutes but they're really super strong after 24 hours there we go there we go because i press them each individually they're okay now so you can even pop a mini bottle of wine in there as well would be strong enough for that so, hi Morty. 
It's a chilly Sunday in Queensland. Chilly Sunday morning. It's almost 6 a.m. on our third last day of winter. Oh, you're about to come into summer. Spring, spring, summer. Just as we're about to go into autumn. So, thank you, Sharon. Yep, it's it's something that really does keep the. It's a good and economic idea as well because then it says you've got 18 sets here. You can buy them in packs of 100 as well, but if you double that up, you get twice the amount if you chop them in half. Okay, so let's move on to the lid. You are going to be needing a hot glue gun. I like the Sizzix one. The, the stand is actually out of stock at Craft Stash, but the glue gun is there. Okay, so that might take a little bit of while to to heat up because I forgot to preheat that. I always do that. There's always one thing I forget to do. Okay, so all the hard work, like I said, this gave me a headache trying to design this. Getting all of these these angles right. You might recognise this actually from these darts here from one of my handbags or two of my handbags because two of my handbag dies actually use the same sort of thing. So I'm going to do a dry run first. I'm just going to curve these in. I'm not going to fold them. You don't have to be exact and fold them in. But just get the, the shape of the curve in like that. And that is what's going to create this curved uh, top there. those down and I think I might just add the red tape to the tabs while the, uh, the glue gun is really really easy to use the glue gun for this. If you use anything else you'll be there like wet glue you'll be you'll be there for a while holding that down because because of the tension in there it's gonna want to spring apart so you need something instant sticking for that and even with the red tape it will still want to kind of pull away so I barely have anything left on this one. So let's see, this should hold. I should have enough here. So using the red tape on these side panels will be enough. It'll be good enough. Here's my Tim Holtz. So, yeah, my chickens can be sometimes people ask about my chickens as well. They're doing okay. Over winter they had to stay under shelter because of the avian flu. So they had three months of being in our polytunnel. But they're out now. One of them's getting pecked quite a bit, so we're trying to manage that. We've got the um, the purple spray that hides any of the redness and it was it's also healing as well. And we're thinking about um, you can buy those red glasses covers that you put on the agitator on the bully chicken so we worked out which one it is so we're just keeping an eye on her at the moment hoping the feathers start to grow back so we don't actually have to use anything um, otherwise okay, we might have to separate her take, take the bully away keep her within the flock but separated by a little fence so she's still visible but and um, yeah, both of those are quite like drastic and and stuff. So we're just hoping that she just stops the picking. But yeah, we might have to put those glasses on. I know you can get the beak guards as well. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes. Okay, so this should now have heated up. I'm just gonna test that out. Yep, it has. Okay, so dry run first. I'm gonna add my glue there like the Mr Bean when he does that painting with the firework, like do a dry run first, add the paint and then we do that. Okay, so you add your bit of glue there and straight away, don't even put this down, you should be able to manage that just like that. Okay, so practice this first just so you know in your memory, your muscle memory what that movement is. So you add your bit of glue and I'm putting it near the corner there, oh I put it down. been about a year since I made one of these so there we go there is our first corner so I'm just gonna take all the rest of these off I 
never used to work with a lot of red tape, but now I do. It's become my friend, so he really does speed things up a little. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same on this one. A little bit on the corner there because it does like to kind of ooze out a bit. So get that pressed in first and then do your corner just like that. And again, you can watch this on replay. So yeah, that is our lid done. It looks super complicated to put together, but really it, it's just a bit of hot glue and some tape and it's done. Okay, I'm gonna just put that aside. I'm gonna leave that on because I'm gonna be moving on to the 3D stars in a moment. Just tidying up as well, because those little red things, these get everywhere. Okay, so now we can pop this on. And again, because we have this score line here and score line there, if you're if you've made your lid a bit too lid a bit too tight, you can just kind of pop that in. And there we go. There is our telephone box. I'm just gonna oh no, that's not the one. Here it is. Everything fell on top of it, so I'm just gonna pop that onto the top. And then I'm gonna steal the lid from the other one because that has some micro lights inside the lid and I'll show you exactly what I did for that in a moment. Let's put that lid on. There we go and if you want you can go all around the edge there, one on each side like I have with this one. So let's take this one out. So what have I done here? Right, so these are the micro lights. Again, I will remember to pop these in but if you just type in uh, Amazon or wherever you get your micro lights from um, just type that in wire lights you can get these coming like rose gold get them in silver so what I've done is I've hot glued the battery pack there but I've made sure that the screws are on the outside here so if I need to change the batteries um, is it CR32s or something like that big big round buttons I think they take two of them so I can easily change those over. So let's turn those on. Hopefully that won't disturb the lighting too much. So this is the, the second live in a row now that I've done with lighting. So you can tell we are edging towards Christmas. Okay, so let's take this off. Right, so all we have to do is pop those in. And again, this will look really nice with a vellum windows as well. Pop that on and there we have our telephone box ornament with the Christmas lights inside and again it doesn't have to be for Christmas this will look awesome next to some Christmas trees um, and, and if you have any other London things it will look really nice nested in with all of that um, even if you have one of those trucks with the trees in I love those I've got a couple of those already so this is going to look really nice and even if it's not festive and you just have a nice bookshelf it's going to look really nice there lit up in the evening as well so that is the telephone box I'll quickly show you the dies again and then we're going to be moving on so that is the telephone box additions die set and that is twinned with the square paper bag so before I move on to the next one I want to show you the mini album that this also makes so I did run out of space earlier here it is so with these two die sets, with the large ultimate binding and the square paper bag, you can make this mini album here. Now this one I made in a few parts live last summer. So I've linked all the videos for this mini album down below. So this is the same paper bag that we used to make this, but it's folded up with the gussets just like that to make. Some of you might even remember this. So. 
I will show you exactly how to make these pockets, how to fold it up, which bits to snip off, and you also get two pockets in the centre here. So with the last delivery that just came in last week, we have the square paper bag that came back in stock and all of the mini album dies are now back in stock. So this is the large ultimate binding, the small ultimate binding and all of the other mini albums apart from Snapshot have come back into stock. So I'm super excited to start making videos on those again as well. So um, Halloween mini album, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you really like that idea. So um, yeah, so I do do a step by step on how to make this mini album there. I absolutely love this. I think maybe even the papers are still available too. Now this comes in a hard cover and it does go inside this suitcase. Now unfortunately this suitcase is out of stock but it does nestle inside in there too so it's a lot of fun. It just pops in there. There we go little album. Okay, so let's move over to the stars. Just need to find the, I've got so many die sets out, I'm just wondering where I've put it. Here we are. Okay, this is 3D stars die set. Now this was a request because I didn't have a video for this one. So I'm going to quickly show you how easy it is to put this together. So I've die cut two out already with a gold non-shared glitter card. I folded all the score lines, so you fold on the long points here and then you fold inwards on the shorter lines and longer, sorry, and outwards on the longer lines and then you fold these under and I've added my red tape to the tab so I have two of those ready to go. You get three sizes and also these, these little things that look like fish, they're not fish but you can, you can use them as fish if you need to. Or want to so these are tabs so you, you can make you can make it hang just like that make a little hang tag so you can have all of these stars that look really nice in um, a display on a window I'm looking for my poker tool so I'm just going to take all of these off so again red tape is the easiest adhesive to use with um, this die set I always try to tell you which is the best adhesive to use for each one because I've done the trials and errors and the mishaps. Some some of them live on the shopping channel as well, Queen Craft and Pachanda. Oh, sorry, the um, craft store. Um, so yes, I've like <laughs> I've made quite a few little mistakes live on TV. So you just gotta just keep going, just keep going. Thank you, Elizabeth. So, so um, is that the star, the stars that you love? Ah, it's stuck to me. Okay, so I've got those ready. Keep these separate, otherwise I'll stick together. Okay, so this is super easy to um, put together. On, I sh I demonstrated this on Create and Craft on Monday, just gone. So you might be able to watch that on um, playback. And I show you um, exactly how to put this together two different ways. So you can make puffy stars, or you can make the stars that I'm about to show you. Ah, so you just need to get that on just like that, and that is the first point done. Give that a good squeeze. Obviously, don't squash it flat. Okay, so the next one, there we go. It's absolutely super duper easy with the red tape. As long as you don't mind it sticking to you every now and then, because it will want to kind of stick to your finger. Again, this is going to look great on loads of different things. I have a Christmas tree die as well. This looks fabulous and on the top of that. I have so many Christmas dies. And I'm releasing some more Christmas dies later on in, um, in the year as well, so I'm really looking forward to that one. But first, we have some autumn themed things, and there's an extra autumn theme that we've never covered before with their uh, Simply Made Crafts, and I'm super excited about that one. And that's coming up next, um, towards the end of September. 
So that is our first star done. You can even stick that onto um, a box. That will look really nice as a big box. Again, you can have that flat leaning up against something as well. Um, I have got a quick example to show you. Now this is a gift box that I made for um, Craft, Craft World. I do have a profile on there. So as you can see, this is the second. This is the second star down. You even get a smaller star. But the star here is a is a star gift box, and you can you can pop things in a little mini bottle of wine and add some tissue paper and things. That was made using the star box die sets. I do get questions, a lot of questions about things that appear on my ch my channel, so uh, my videos. So I try to link as much as I can so everything should be down there. If I do forget anything let me know and I can add it. So that is this that is one way to put the star box together. And another way that you can put it together, if I can find it, here we go, is this one. This is also the star box as well. So it's a really good size box and again the medium star will fit on there. I've popped a butterfly. I think this was yeah I have this video linked down below for this box here. That was one of my lives from last summer as well because that was um, out of stock for quite a while. So I'm just really excited about everything that's coming back in stock because I've been just waiting and waiting for them to come back. So um, yeah, super exciting. Let's get this finished now. I am waffling on but hey, it's Saturday evening here for me. Oh, thank you Barbara. I do love these star boxes. The star boxes are just so versatile. You can use them for Christmas, you can use them for birthdays, anniversaries, New Year. There's just so many occasions and celebrations that you can use a star box for. Even like my baby's first Christmas, new baby. So, um, so Barbara's from California. That's that's all right. It's probably super early there still. Lunchtime maybe coming up to lunch time. So are you from like north part of California or the south? Um, and there's a lot of fires on the moment as well. I do have a friend, um, Jeanette, she's had to evacuate. If anyone remembers Jeanette from um, presenting Craft Stash Live. Yeah, she's had to evacuate. So that's there's a huge fire over there. So, Yep, she's she's okay. She's evacuated, so I just really hope her house is okay. Okay, so we now have something that looks like this. So there's two different ways that you can pop this together. You can pop them together just like that, just like that, and have a double-sided star, or you can stagger them just like that that is super pretty that really is and some of these two together i've cut these two out because it's it's white on the side there but you can actually get double-sided glitter cardstock like dovecraft do them um in all sorts of different colors so let's get that glued together there we go now i would be using this if I was going to pop it together just like that. I would pop that in there, and then I will have a nice loop there to put my thread in. I'm going to pop it together like this today. So, just wondering how that would look just like that. I'm going to pop that on there, I think. I do have a funny line there now but I covered that up with a bow if you don't have bows leave the bows out um, not everyone likes a good bow that's what we have our stand for to stop it sliding off the table okay so I'm just working out here where we have to put our glue so I'm going to put a line of glue just here there so I always love to do a dry run first just to keep mistakes down to a minimum. And I'm just going to pop that on. I had a bit of glue escape out of that, but I think we are good. 
okay so just keep it pressed down while the the glue cools down that's a really funky style I love that and again it just continues either side so which style do you prefer this one or, or everything lined up and it completely changes the the look of everything and I am going to use hot glue on this because I know that using the wet glue on bits of cardstock can take a little bit of time to set dry properly. Okay, that's added on. Right, so I need to find uh, I need to find a ribbon now. So um, I have white, like an ivory white. I've got a navy, navy. Oh yeah, I'm going to use navy. Navy and gold. Okay, so this is how I store my my ribbons. It stops them from kind of unraveling. Just add a, just use an elastic band and it will be fine. Keep it all in place. So I actually get my ribbons from eBay of all places because in the UK we have quite a few ribbon sellers that do buy three get the fourth. Uh, sorry, buy three uh, rolls of ribbon and then get the fourth one for free or they'll do a discount if you buy more than three and things like that so that's where I buy my ribbon from I don't, I don't know if eBay in, in other countries will have the same sorts of offer but in the UK that is where I get my ribbons that might be a bit big no, I'm not sure actually that might, might be okay Keep these nice and long as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it just like that. Again, this this die set is linked down below. I'm sure some of you might already have this one. There we go. And there is our navy and gold. So if you'd like to put in the comments what your favourite colour combination for Christmas is. Let me know. I do love champagne. The colour champagne. I don't like to drink champagne, but no, I'm a bit weird like that. But no, colour champagne. Yep, all for that. So there is our star. So I can, that would look really good on a gift box as well. Just add your, um, your thread there and um, a little gift tag as well. And that is going to look perfect. Especially if you make it from some of the smaller ones as well. If you have a really big gift box, this would look really good. But if you have a smaller gift box or anything like that, then you have the other two smaller ones to choose from. I'm just trying to get this back in there now. So, um, so Barbara's saying it's lunchtime where she is. She's on the central coast between LA and San Fran. So, sorry to hear your phone had to evacuate. Yeah, ah, some of you may know her. Um, she is a crafter too, so I used to work with her at Craft Stash, so she's in my thoughts every single day. I'm always checking to see how the fire is, and, and that way it's, it's headed towards uh, is it South Lake Tahoe at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's also really interesting at the same time, but I do worry, you know, that maybe her house has gone, you know, so, yeah. Okay, so that is the 3D star. I absolutely love that one. That is definitely going to be displayed at Christmas and I'm going to make up the other two as well and have that displayed. And here is the telephone box with the beautiful lid as well. So I've tried to link as much stuff as I can for um, the description box. Everything should be down below, and this will also be available on replay as well. Especially if you want to recreate this, if you get the die sets or have the die sets, this is exactly how you pop it together. It's super easy. So that's now ready to go back into his basket. There we have it. Okay, so it's Saturday night for me now. Um, I haven't had my dinner yet, so. I'm going to go grab myself something to eat. I really appreciate everyone that has joined uh, joined me today. So um, I just I'm just really happy that people have joined in, 
and uh, joining me on this Saturday night. It should be a little bit more busy towards the end of the year. Summer is always so quiet when I do the lives, so I'm really appreciative to everyone that has joined in. So, for me, what am I going to be doing next? I am going to be working on my new collection, getting the samples done. I have three weeks, I think, before the launch. Um, I'm also going to be working on my Halloween series and getting some Halloween makes out for you guys. Um, I've literally had non-stop back-to-back work uh, of Simply Make Crafts related stuff um, that's taken up most of my time since July. It's literally been non-stop work basically. Just You finish one thing, you have to start the next thing. Uh, it's just getting everything in um, into manufacture. Um, for next year yeah, we're working so far in advance now we have all these cut off plates that things need to be done right so it's literally being non-stop i am pretty tired so um, i'm taking a couple of days out as well just to uh, get my bearings before i go back to everything so um yeah i'm really happy that you guys have joined me i really want to keep up these uh, saturday night lives as well so um I need ideas for next week so I'm thinking maybe a Halloween make might be in order and perhaps maybe a mini album too so now all my dyes are back in um, I might be carrying on with my mini album series and showing you what you can make with them and so I just need to find some Halloween paper and we'll be good to go so I'm hoping you can all join me for next Saturday and uh, thank you very much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time <laughs>